Hello, in this video we're going to have a look at how we calculate customer lifetime value for a bank. Now there's a link to a template below that you can use, but I first need to set up what information we need to build this uh, view of customer lifetime value. So the first thing I'm suggesting is we need to look at banks on a segment basis. Now, the reason we need to do that is, is there's so much variety of different customers in a bank. So you can have people who borrow a lot of money, people who borrow a small amount, depositors, transactors, um, various configurations. So we need to think about putting our banking customers into related sets or segments, and then we can calculate customer lifetime value on a segment basis individually and then put them together to give our overall view. We cannot take an average customer because there's really no such uh, type of customer in a bank. They, they vary substantially. So what do we need? for On a segment basis, we need to have, what is for that segment, what is their average balance either of loans or money they put with us? And I've got the note, they keep moving. So what that means is, a loan gets paid down on a regular basis. People are putting money in and out of accounts. So these balances move around. So we've just got to take an average balance at some point of time, whether that's a month or something like that. The average interest rate margin, and again, that moves around, and I'll talk about that, but that's the money left over uh, between our people who give us money and people we lend money to. Um, the average revenue from non-interest income sources so up here we're talking about loans and savings but we can also make money from fees commissions uh, selling things so we need to consider that because they they contribute to our income we need to look at the cost of providing or supporting the customer so we might have retention costs in there obviously and if there's a, a transactor they could be incurring fees on our behalf, so they could be using a machine or something like that to take out money, and we have a cost to put that to. So all the things that we need to do to, su to supply that customer. So if you think about it from a normal perspective, somebody goes into McDonald's and buys a burger, then we have to give them a burger. So what is the cost of that burger? What is the cost of that staff? What is the cost of the, the rental? premises to provide that so we've got to be thinking the same thing in banking and then finally we need a, a discount rate sometimes known as a hurdle rate uh, generally a bank will have that internally I'll talk about that when I get to the, the template now the way the template works is we split profits between customers so an example here we have two customers one's given us uh, $10,000 in savings and we pay them 6% uh, interest and we have lent that out to another customer uh, as a loan and we, we're getting a 10% interest. Now, obviously, we're not matching that exactly, but it goes into our portfolio and gets matched off. So for these two customers, we are making uh, a 4% margin, which is probably a, bit, a little bit high in, in today's world, but just for the example. And assuming that the borrower is only um, paying... Uh, repayments not interest we will make a thousand dollars of interest from the borrower so 10 percent times that uh, gives us a thousand dollars and we pay the person who gave us the savings account six hundred dollars because they're getting six percent and that gives us a profit of four hundred dollars but that's between the two customers so collectively we make four hundred dollars Obviously, we're all making it from the, the person giving us the interest. But without customer A, we cannot execute that transaction. So in terms of a customer lifetime value, we go, okay, $400 from these two types of customers, that is $200 each. So that's how we would look at it in terms of the calculation, and that's how the template handles it. And in terms of net interest margin, uh, which is important. Uh, it's the difference between our, our, our lending rates and our saving rates. Um, if we need that, a lot of banks will publish that possibly in their annual report or, or disclose it in media if it's uh, improving. 
Um, but as a rough estimate, you can go to the annual report and have a look at their total net interest for the, for the year or the period and divide it by their um, total average assets. And that gives you a ballpark figure. Okay, let's now have a look at the template. I'll just switch across. Okay, here is the template for financial institutions or banks when you open it. Uh, there's a link below, as I said. And the instructions are we type into the gold cells, so all these bright colored cells, and the blue cells calculate automatically. And there's step one, step two, step three, and we just follow the steps. So the first thing we need to do, if we're looking at new customers, um, we need to build in what is the acquisition cost. So we work out, okay, over a period of time, we spent so much money on promotion and incentives to attract customers. How many did we acquire in that period? And then we work out the the um, the average acquisition cost. And this is an average, of course, so it will vary. But again, it gives us a good starting point. If we're looking at existing customers, obviously we already have them. They're already acquired them and that's a sunken cost and we don't need to um, put any hick in here. We can set that to zero. Over here, step two is the discount rate. Now this is um, helpful because it looks, takes into account our longer term returns from a customer and it reduces it back to a present value number. Okay, so if you don't want to do this, you can just set this to zero. You can just type in zero there. Or if you, if you have that information from finance or you're in a bank that compares different uh, investments, because that's what new customers are. When we spend money on promotion, it's an investment in the bank's future because we're attracting new customers or retaining customers. Um, generally, in the old days, I suppose, when, when um, interest rates were higher, you'd have this as a higher rate. But you've got to keep in mind, when the banks cannot lend out money, they have to invest it in the, some sort of money market uh, or a government bond where the rate is quite low. So we need to come up with a, a suitable discount rate. So I'm suggesting 5% currently. Then we come down to step three, revenues costs. So we've got this whole section there, which is revenues costs. So we put in what is the average balance? So again, we're looking at, uh, you know, a segment, whatever you want to look at, loans or savings. I'd probably suggest you look at it separately. And what I've got, I've got a 10 year horizon. Um, and then from a year 11 onwards, I've just got an estimate. Now this goes out, this calculation actually takes into account 50 years, which you'd go, oh, well, that doesn't make any sense. We're not going to have a customer for 50 years. Well, in banking, you may, but because we have a discounted rate, money that, that's acquired out, you know, our profit from those customers out, you know, 10, 15 years time is actually quite minimal. So it does not make a lot of difference to the calculation of customer lifetime value because we're using a discount rate. If you're not using a discount rate, you probably want to keep this cell year 11 onwards as zero because otherwise it's going to build that in. Okay, so what I've got here as an example, we start with 10,000 and I'm assuming they're new customers. So we're working pretty hard to try and cross sell them and upsell them. So usually in the first few years, there would be some increase in, in value. And then we reach our sort of maximum relationship and it would probably flatten out. Here I've got average interest rate margin, let's say 2%. And assuming we had a, a, a goal of being a bit more price competitive, um, I've got this running down and then stabilizing. Most banks would keep this relatively stable over time or potentially increase, um, try to edge that up. So I've probably got this working a little bit differently, but I'm just highlighting that you can build in your, uh, your view of uh, how you see this progressing. And then these two numbers just calculate that gives us our, our average interest return over that period of time. And you can see out here is stabilized. Then we come down to, for this segment, what money do we meet from, from fees and commissions? So this is our revenue to us. So again, in the first few years, I've got this edging up and then stabilizing. 
Then we go, what, what is the cost? So we've sort of got to work out again on a segment basis all the relevant costs of, of holding and managing a customer. So I've got this just increasing over time. Um, so this is on a, on a per customer basis. So it seems pretty low, $25, but that's the cost for an individual customer, even though we're looking at on a segment basis. So this customer is the average customer in that segment. And as we know, costs will keep going up. So I've just got that running upwards. And then what are our costs of retention, upselling? So any sort of marketing activities involved in, in that loyalty programs and in, in a special deals, etc. And in the first few years, I've got that a little bit higher because we're working pretty hard to, to uh, increase that customer value. And then I've got that dropping down in the future because it's not as... Um, uh reasonable for us to do because we've had worked hard we've built that relationship they've got the value up and then there's sort of this plateauing as we've probably built reached maximum relationship and these numbers here calculate so these these are obviously uh income these two are our money's going out so that gives us our net change so that's our profit contribution per customer in that segment on a year-by-year -year basis then we need to build in our expect expected retention rate so how many of these customers we're we going to hold in this case they're all new customers so maybe 60 percent continue on 70 percent and i've got this running up to a point and you go oh gee 85 percent might be a little high now, if you're going to lose a customer, you're going to generally lose them in the earlier stages. So when they're new to the relationship, they've come in, um, I'll join this bank, I'll see how we go. Yes, I like you, I will stay. No, I don't like you, I will leave. So over time, in the first few years, you lose uh, people who switch around for money, uh, price switches, and then you lose people who just don't resonate with you. And eventually... The people who stay will stay uh, to be fairly loyal. So that's why I've got this sort of number running up, uh, sort of low at the start and then running up. Obviously, with a bank, people can have very, very long-term relationships. And then I've got this accumulated effect. This is just uh, 60 then times 70 uh, gives us how many people we have. Now, this is a probability or a likelihood. Possibly the other way you can think about it to make more sense of it, if we started with a hundred customers from that campaign or that segment, um, after a year that we'll still have 60. After two years, we'll have 42. And as you can see over here, after 10 years, so we'll, we'll have 11 of those customers. So either way you want to look at it, the probability of somebody still being a customer in 10 years time is 11%. Okay. And this run, runs off. Um, as you can see progressively it builds into the into the formula which means that when we're looking out longer we've got two things discounting um, profits that are you know 10 20 years out even though this formula as template carries out to 50 years the two things as I mentioned before the discounted cash flow and also the likelihood of them still being a customer which is declining over time so even though this goes out to, hey, what profits could we make from this customer in 30 years, it may only add a couple of dollars to the bottom line. Then finally, we've got two calculations. The first one is simply the profits that we expect to make over time multiplied by the likelihood of them being a customer. So this one here is 132 times 60% because we only have 60% of those customers with us, what profit will we make from them? So we're not going to make 132. Yes, if they're an active customer, we'll make $132. But the reality is we won't have all those customers. So the average income from the customers we still have, taking out the, the ones we've lost, so the, the likelihood, the probability, or out of per 100 customers we started with, we're looking at now $79, still thinking about those 100 people. So this is the real number coming in. This is the hypothetical numbers to set it up. And then this 
number takes into account their discount rate. So we're using a 5% uh, discount rate, as we can see up here. So these are just taking 5%, and then it's building up. Then 5% becomes, you know, uh, uh, times another 5%, times another 5%. So it starts to accumulate. So we can see here it's almost taking half the money. So longer term, the discount rate will have some impact. Okay, so once we've entered that, that's all we have to do is, is uh, average balance, average margin, money in, money out, and, and, a, and an estimate of retention. All the other numbers are calculated. And then we come down here to find out our customer lifetime value. So I've got with acquisition costs without. So this may be handy if we already have them as customers. We can check that. Obviously, the bigger number here, the better. So um, it's definitely got to be positive. We never want to see a negative there. So our average customer value is, is 282. Uh, that's, that includes an acquisition cost for existing customers. It's 482. Four years average lifetime value time. So it takes this details here, our retention rate, and then works out what that's going to be. Our internal rate of return. It's a financial metric. You may or may not need this. It's an optional thing. But this this takes into account how how superior are we to to our, our our hurdle rate. So again, we always want a positive here. Anytime this is positive, it means that we are outperforming our our discount rate. If we're below, we are not returning the required discount rate or hurdle rate. Then we've got a return on marketing investment again with um, the acquisition cost. So that means. 219%. So we've spent $200. And as we can see down here, we've got a customer lifetime value of $282. Now that's already taken out the 200 acquisition cost here. So our return on that $200 is 141%. So we spent $200 acquiring the customer and now after paying that back, because it's built into the calculation, we've got a 280 odd dollars, which is a 140% return. And then finally, we have a payback period. How quickly do we recover that $200? So we spent $200 acquiring the customers and it's taken us just over two years. So it takes into account the retention rate. So here, We've got 100, we've got another 70, so we've almost recovered to 200. And in this year, we get another $50, which pushes us over the $200 mark, the acquisition cost. So it calculates how quickly we, we're recovering that money. So it's just over a two and a bit years. And I've got a little note here. If payback is not achieved, uh, we end up with zero. So I'm going to put that in now for you to show what happens. Okay, let's just say we've run this campaign and it was very expensive to acquire customers and we was very unsuccessful. And these numbers won't change because they're the same type of customer, the same segment. We've just spent a lot more on acquisition. And you can see now we've got a negative net present value because it cost us $1,000 to get these customers. Um, these numbers don't change. We are now negative theirs, which means we are losing money. We're not recovering the money we required. And we've, we are got negative return on marketing investment. And as you can see, this becomes zero because there is no payback. Um, so don't be confused. All oh, zero, we get immediate payback. No, that means that we're not getting a payback. And I just construct the uh, formula like that. So please check out the template. Um, there's more information on the website for you. Hopefully this has been a good video for you.